dreams we learn in the Quran and Sunnah can occur from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they can occur from shaitan and they can occur from your own imagination. We said dreams are of three types. Number one, dreams of your imagination. In Arabic, this is called hadithun nafs. Comes from your imagination. So for example, one of us is wanting a very fancy car. You want to buy the latest model of the Jaguar or the Mercedes or something, right? You're thinking about it, daydreaming. You go to sleep, lo and behold, you're driving that car. Okay, this is your hadithun nafs. This is your imagination. And scientists say, this is not from scholars, but scientists say, scientists study dreams, right? There are a special group of scientists who study dreams. I find this very tickling that, mashallah, if they fall asleep on the job, they're the only group of people that can say, we're working while we, while we fall asleep. So there are scientists who study dreams. These scientists, they tell us that this type of dream occurs every night. There is a phase in our sleep when it's called REM, rapid eye movement, there's a phase in our sleep every single night where everybody dreams. Now the sign of this dream, you all know it. When you wake up, the dream is absolutely fresh, right? But then within five seconds, what happens? It's gone. This is the indication, this is this type of dream. It's your imagination. And external impulses affect this type of dream. External impulses, right? So if somebody throws water on your face, you're gonna dream that you're drowning or something. Okay, if you hear your alarm clock go off, it will somehow affect your dream, correct? You will, something will happen in your dream. If somebody is calling you, wake up, wake up, it's time for Fajr. You will, in your dream, it will be translated that somebody is waking you up, correct, right? That type of dream has nothing to do with good or bad. It's your own imagination, hadithun nafs. And the sign of it, you don't remember it at all. You wake up and within five minutes, by, by the time it's middle of the day, you don't even remember anything about the dream, right? This is the sign, hadithun nafs. The second type of dream, it is called in Arabic hulum. And hulum is an evil dream. In English, we call it a nightmare. And these types of dreams are from shaitan. And the sign of this dream is that it terrifies you. You see something evil, something disgusting. You see your loved one die a miserable death. You see yourself in a car accident. You see yourself being chased by evil aliens or beasts or something like this. This type of dream is just the shayateen wanting to irritate you. They're playing a joke, a practical joke on you. They're irritating. Why? Because you're a Muslim. Or even if you're not a Muslim, but non-Muslims have nightmares as well. But this is the shayateen playing with you at your expense. And these types of dreams are never, ever, ever true. Nobody should believe this dream. Nobody should believe nightmares. And our Prophet ﷺ said that nightmare should not be told to anybody. If you see an evil dream, don't go tell other people about it. Why? Because shaitan is making a fool of you. Once a man came to the Prophet and he said, O Messenger of Allah, I saw my head got cut off in the dream and it was rolling like a ball and I'm running after it to pick it up. The Prophet ﷺ said, don't tell other people how shaitan played with you last night. Don't go tell other people this. He's laughing now when you go tell him because you believe this dream. What is the sign of this type of dream? You wake up terrified. You wake up in a sweat. You wake up in the middle of the night. What was that? What, 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 how, what did I see? This is the sign. This is from shaitan. Shaitan does not know the future. So if you see yourself in a car accident and the next morning you call and say, I'm not going to go to work because I don't want to drive. Shaitan's the one laughing at you. Shaitan's the one laughing at you because you believed him. In the nightmares, you have to reject them because there is no truth, not an element of truth in them. Zero. And if you follow it and believe it, shaitan is the one who will be the winner. A nightmare, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you wake up with that type of nightmare, you seek refuge in shaitan. Say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim And you're allowed to spit on the left-hand side as you do this. And the spit that the Prophet ﷺ talked about is a spit where the noise is made but nothing comes out. Like that. It's called nafath. And that is to expel shaitan from you. And say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim and also the Prophet ﷺ said, whatever side you're on, turn to the other side. Why? Because shaitan, while he's teasing you, he is around you or sitting on you. So when you say, A'udhu Billah, and you turn around, he has to flee and run away. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if it's really bad, then even stand up and pray to Raka'at to seek refuge in shaitan and to establish that relationship with Allah. Whatever you do, you don't tell anybody, not your loved ones, not your spouse, not your friends, nobody. These types of dreams, you leave them. Also, by the way, dreams of a vulgar nature, wet dreams, these are also from shaitan. Now, a man is not sinful or a woman is not sinful for having such dreams. However, as you all know, the fiqh is when you wake up and you find that uh, you have reached that state, then you must perform an entire ghusl. That dream is from shaitan, 
even though there's no sin on you because you don't control your dreams. And that is why the prophets never have wet dreams. None of the prophets can have wet dreams because this is from shaitan, this extreme vulgarity that uh, it is natural. I mean, there's no reason for us to feel guilty about this. It is natural for a person to go through this and it is not something to feel any issue about. But we should realize that this type of dream is coming from shaitan. It's shaitan who will show us such images in our head and cause this to happen. And then we wake up in the middle of this freezing cold weather and we have to go take a shower. This, this is not something that is coming from us or from Allah. This is from shaitan. So this is another type of hulm, another type of evil dream. Once again, we don't tell people about it. We don't go tell anybody. But if we wake up in that state, obviously we have to do ghusl. So this is the second type of dream. So the first type was what? Hadith al-Nafs. The second type, nightmares from shaitan. The third type, this leaves the third type. The third type is mubashirat. Or also called in Arabic, ru'ya. And ru'ya is a vision from Allah. It is a, a positive dream. And no dream from Allah will cause you to awake in a frightened state. You will not wake up terrified or else it wouldn't be a mubashir, would it? What does mubashir mean? From Bashir, from Bashara. What does mubashir mean? Glad tidings, good news, right? Something optimistic. Or even if it's not positive, it will be a factual statement. It will be something true and not something terrifying. Now, what is the sign of this type of dream? You will wake up remembering the dream vividly. So it's not hadith nafs And you will wake up not in a terrified state. When these two conditions are met, it is very possible, very likely that it is a mubashir. Sometimes you wake up in a positive state because you saw something positive. And sometimes you wake up in a neutral state. You're not scared and you're not happy, but you might be confused. What did I see? But you're never going to wake up terrified. If you wake up terrified, it's not from Allah. It's from, from shaitan. Now, dreams from Allah are one of two types. Dreams from Allah are one of two types. The first of them, which is less common, is that you see an actual event with you in it without any symbolism. You see something that will happen in the future and there's no symbolism in it. It's a direct, if you like, if you watch, if you like a, an enactment of the future. This is exactly what will happen, okay? So the Prophet ﷺ saw a dream that he's doing tawaf around the Kaaba. What year was this? Sixth year of the Hijrah, right? He saw a dream, he's doing tawaf around the Kaaba. So he, there is no symbolism when, when he saw the dream, he knew this is not a symbolic dream. So he said, Oh Muslims, I saw a dream, I'm doing tawaf around the Kaaba, let's go do Umrah. What happened that year? They stopped him from coming in. And the Treaty of Hudaybiyah took place, right? Where the Prophet ﷺ was prevented from going into Mecca. He saw a dream, there's no symbolism. I saw myself doing tawaf and shaving my hair, this will happen. Allah said in the Quran, this dream that you saw is a true dream. You're going to enter Masjid Al-Haram. It will happen. Not this year, next. It will happen next year. So this is the first type of dream. That you see an actual enactment of what will happen. This is rarer. It's rare, but it happens. It's more common to the Prophets. So Prophet Ibrahim sees, what does he see? I see myself sacrificing you. There's no symbolism. It's clear cut, right? More common to the prophets. Uh, with regards to such types of dreams, our Prophet ﷺ narrates, Aisha tells us, that for six months before the revelation of the Quran, every single night, the Prophet ﷺ would see one of these dreams. For six months non-stop, every time our Prophet ﷺ would go to sleep, he would dream what's going to happen tomorrow. He might be in the souq buying and selling, he dreams it. Next day, the exact same thing happens. He dreams he's going to meet somebody. Next day, that person comes, he meets him. One day, literally 12 hours gap. He sees the dream, the next morning it happens. For six months non-stop. Why? Allah is telling him something special is going to happen. Allah is telling him something great is going to happen. Preparing him for the revelation of Iqra. For six months this happens and then Iqra is revealed. So this is this type of dream. We said dreams from Allah are two types. Number one, no symbolism. Number two, symbolism. And this is the more common type. Sometimes the prophets have it, yes. And more commonly, even non-prophets have it. And in this type of dream, every object that you see symbolizes, represents something else. So an ear of corn represents a year of water, according to the story of Yusuf, right? Or a very fat cow and a very thin cow represents a year of drought versus a year of surplus, right? Or X represents Y. A tree represents this, the Kaaba represents that. 
Okay, light represents something else. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, I saw men wearing robes of different sizes. Some of their robes were up to their necks, some of them up to their stomachs. And I saw Umar ibn al-Khattab, his robe, his shirt was dragging behind him. They said, how did you interpret it? He said, the religion. People have different sizes of religion. Some's religion is small, some's religion is big. Umar's religion was so strong, it's going all the way back there. So a shirt means religion in this dream. Now, by the way, this doesn't mean that in every single dream, a shirt symbolizes religion. But in this dream, it did. So this type of dream is a symbolic dream. Another point here, the Prophet said, when you see such a dream from Allah, what type of dream? The beautiful dream. Mubashirat. Don't tell anyone except someone whom you trust. The good dreams, you only tell them to those whom you trust. Because people might get jealous, because people might think evil thoughts, you only tell the ones who are close to you. You're allowed to tell, you should tell, but you only tell those who are, you trust. Now, when you tell those whom you trust, if you don't know how to interpret dreams, you should be quiet. Because there's a danger for incorrectly interpreting dreams. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, a dream that has not been interpreted is like a bird flying above you. As soon as someone interprets it, the bird will fall down. Meaning, done deal. You only want the person to interpret the dream who is the most qualified to do so. You may tell people, yes, your loved ones, but the loved ones who are not knowledgeable of dream interpretation should be quiet. You should only go to those whom you trust that are knowledgeable to interpret the dreams. This is known by experience. So in the community, there might be a person, mashallah, he's muttaqi, he's praying five times a day. He's And by the way, generally speaking, the more righteous you are, the more likely you will have this, this knowledge, right? This is a general rule of thumb. The closer you are to Allah, the more this knowledge will just be innate in you. It just comes to you. It just, it is natural to you. It comes out like this. So you go to those people and they interpret the dream and you will find out whether that dream is true or not. So somebody sees a dream, the dream interpreter tells him, this dream means that you will pass the exam you are studying for. Lo and behold, he passes the exam, right? Or this dream means that such and such will happen. Lo and behold, it happens. So we, from experience, we learn that this person, mashallah, he knows dream interpretation. However, nobody's dream interpretation can be 100% accurate other than the prophets of Allah. It's only the prophets of Allah who have 100% accurate dream interpretations. What is the evidence for this? Long hadith in Sahih Bukhari, where somebody saw a dream. In fact, it was the Prophet wasallam. He saw a dream and he told it to the people. Abu Bakr raised his hand. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I beg you by Allah, let me interpret the dream. Let me interpret the dream. So the Prophet said, okay, interpret it. Abu Bakr took every symbol and he said, this means this, this means this, this means this. Am I right, O Messenger of Allah? He said, you are right in some and you are wrong in others. If Abu Bakr as-Siddiq could not fully master the science of dream interpretation, no other human being after the prophets can. So what this means is that even the greatest dream interpreter, it's not 100% solid. It is on and off, it's majority and whatnot. And of course, dream interpretations are not, one of the reasons they are not book knowledge is because symbols vary from society to culture to place. And therefore you cannot just open up a book and look up what this symbol means. To, be, to give you a funny example, let's say, okay? What a coconut symbolizes to a person living in a desert island is not the same as what it symbolizes to a person living in the city. Just give you a ridiculous example, okay? For that person, the coconut symbolizes life, water, food. For me, a coconut does not symbolize any of those things, okay? It's a very different thing. Or for example, in our culture, Indian Pakistan, a white elephant symbolizes something. Those of us who are from there, we know that, right? A white elephant symbolizes something. Now, if an American sees a white elephant, it doesn't symbolize to him what it symbolizes to people of other cultures. So the point being, symbols will be relevant to the culture of the people because Allah is communicating to him. So there's no concept of a universal dictionary of dreams, a universal encyclopedia of dreams. Rather, dreams are very personal and you go to the local people who know you, who know your background, and you inform your dreams, and then if they know, they will interpret it. In intro, a very interesting hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, dreams from Allah are the only thing that remains of prophethood, and they represent 146th of prophethood. Very precise fraction. One juz out of 46 ajza of prophethood. It's a very precise fraction. So he's saying, to be a prophet, you need 46 things. One of them is true dreams. Those other 45, the door has been shut. 
They're not going to happen anymore in mankind. Maybe Jibreel coming down is one of them. Seeing the angels is another. We don't know. We don't know the list. There are 46 things that prophets, all of them do. All 45 have been shut for everybody till the day of judgment, except one door that's been left open. That is the door of good dreams. Now, where did this fraction come from? What is this fraction? Scholars say, if you look at the life of the Prophet wasallam, he received wahi for how long? How many years? 23. 23 years, 13 in Mecca and 10 in Medina. So that's 23. And for six months before the wahi began, he saw two dreams. Six months is half a year. 0 0.5 over 23 equals 1 over 46. Exact fraction, right? This is the exact fraction, 1 over 46. And that's exactly what our Prophet ﷺ said. That nothing is left of prophethood except dreams. And these dreams are 1 out of 46 of prophethood.